Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about how to set up valid science experiments and what independent and dependent variables mean. But first, I want to tell you a story about my fake cousin, Billy Bob. Billy Bob's a peach farmer out in Georgia, and he came up to me one time when we're at a family get-together, and he started telling me about this thing he was doing. He had come up with his own experiment, and he had set it up like this. He said, I had three plots of land, and I ran my little science experiment. And in one plot of land, I gave a little bit of water and a little amount of sun. It was in a shady part of my tree farm. And as a result, the tree grew up to be somewhat short. And in another area, I had a much sunnier patch of ground, and so I gave that tree seedling a bunch of extra water as well, and as a result, the tree grew up to be very tall. And there was a third patch of grounds, and there was a medium amount of water, essentially, and a medium amount of sunlight. And Billy Bob's conclusion was, this setup had the biggest tree, this middle setup right here, had the biggest tree, the largest results, because it had lots of water. Does this work as an experiment? And the answer is no, absolutely not. This is not a good scientific experiment. Why? Why is this not a good science experiment? Why does the conclusion not follow logically from the experiment itself? And the answer is because we simply don't know. We don't know if this middle tree grew up to be large because it got lots of water or because it got lots of sun or some combination of both. This is a bad experiment that is set up in a logically invalid way. So what could Billy Bob have done better to be able to test the amount of water and the amount of sunlight on his tree growth? Well, one thing he could have done better is he could have broken this up into two different experiments. And so the first one, he could vary, he could change the amount of water that these plots of land got, but keep everything else the same. He would want to control the other variables. So to control a variable means to keep steady as much as possible and to account for any differences statistically in your experiment as well. So for instance, in this experiment here, you would want to have the same soil types. If you were going to test water, you would want to have the same soil types so that you know the results are based on the water, not based on the soil types. Like the amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, and carbon in the soil is important for growing plants. That would have to be measured and kept the same for all three plots of land. And if we controlled all of the major variables in this way, we would have something that would be scientifically valid here for our results. The harder one to control would be to control for sunlight, but Essentially, if you planted all three trees in an area that got roughly the same amount of sunlight, that would control for that variable more or less. And if he was still interested in the amount of sun and how it affected plant growth, he would set it up again as a separate experiment where he varied the amount of sun. So his original idea would not work because it had two variables that were being varied and tested for, two manipulated variables, you could say, or two independent variables. And so the way to solve for that is to break up his experiment that was invalid into two valid ones. And in this case, you could vary the amount of sun that the trees got as they were growing and developing, and you would have to control for everything else. So for instance, you would have to make sure that the amount of water that each of these trees got as they were growing would be exactly the same. If you did that and controlled for soil and other issues, then your science experiment would be valid. You could say, if this tree, for instance, grew up to be larger, you could say, well, it seems like in these conditions, with this amount of light, that the amount of sunlight does have a direct impact on the growth of peach trees in Georgia. All right, and I had mentioned previously independent or manipulated variable versus dependent or responding variable. So I'm gonna want you to start thinking about these. In different textbooks or instructors use different terms here. The traditional term has to do with independent or dependent variables. So the easiest way to think about this is to think of the two concepts that you're relating and to imagine which is going to be dependent on something else. And so let me give you an example here. And this is the strategy I want you to use. Put these two concepts in a sentence and see which one makes the most sense. All right, so the first logical option we have is, does the amount of sun that is received by the plant depend on the growth of the plant itself? That's the first option. 
Does that make sense? The amount of sun that the plant receives depends on the growth of the plant? Or does the second option make more sense? The growth of the plant depends on the amount of sunlight that the plant receives. So hopefully you can figure out that the second option makes more sense. You would say that plant growth is dependent on the amount of sunlight that the plant gets. So we would say the responding variable or the dependent variable dependent on what else is going on plant growth is going to be the dependent variable in this case or the responding variable it's going to be dependent on other factors like the amount of sunlight so in this case the independent variable would be the amount of sunlight because the amount of sunlight it doesn't essentially care it doesn't depend on the plant growth the sun just shines it's independent of the plant growth all right and so let's take a look at how to put this on a graph you're going to always, always, always want to put the independent variable, or sometimes called manipulative variable, on the x-axis. And the dependent variable is always going to be in the y-axis here. A lot of times this can be time, because time oftentimes can be independent. It just keeps moving on. But sometimes time is not independent. It is dependent, like how fast it takes someone to run 100 meters or something. In that case, that would be more of a dependent variable than an independent variable. Okay, and so just to recap some of the things we talked about here, so if we were going to put tree height and water given as a dependent or independent variable, I want you to think about which would go where, the height of the tree or the amount of water given to the plant, which is going to be which, and where are these things going to go. So take a moment to think about tree height, should that be on the y-axis or on the x-axis, water given, should that be on the y-axis or the x-axis. Okay, and it turns out that tree height is going to be our dependent or responding variable, so that should be on the y-axis, and the amount of water given should be our independent variable or manipulated variable, and that should be on the x-axis. How about this? Same one we talked about on the last slide, but sun given versus tree height. So is the amount of sun given, is that going to be on the y-axis or the x-axis? And tree height, is that going to be on the y or the x-axis? Okay, and the answer is the amount of sun given is going to be independent. The amount of sun that's given does not depend on the plant growth, right? The plant growth depends on the amount of sun given. So tree height is going to be on the y-axis and sun given is going to be on the x-axis. So this is how to think about this and how to set up a graph effectively for a science lab or a science classroom, or at least one aspect of setting up a graph correctly. And that's what I wanted to cover. I mean, this is a really important concept that we're covering today it will impact most of the ideas that you do in labs in your science class. So whatever your science class is, it will be expected that you understand these foundational ideas here. So hopefully this has been helpful. I'll be doing more screencasts, more lessons on other topics, and I hope you have a great day.